burning question for you. Which of government's strategic priorities can have a direct and immediate impact on the lives of ordinary Jamaicans? Hmm. If you guessed number five, effective social inclusion, you hit the nail right on the head. So on Jamaica Magazine today, we'll recap 2013-2014 achievements that are linked to that objective. Also in the half hour, we show you how one community has bonded to maintain law and order. I'm Audrey Williams. Stay with me. We'll kick things off with important messages and the news of the day. Avoid. Alter. Accept. Three steps to help you quit smoking. Three things to help you kick that cigarette butt. Avoid places, people and things that encourage smoking. Alter the way you do things. If you normally drive a certain route and when you drive a certain route you're going to pass a bar. Drive a different route, you don't pass the bar. Get rid of ashtrays and all smoking apparatus. Breathe in and out. Drink some water, count to 300, go for a walk, and hang around non-smokers. And after all that, accept that you need help. With support, you're going to find, oh, I really feel better with support. Because the person who's supporting you is going to say, you know, I'm proud of you. Do it one day at a time. Join the fight and quit smoking for life. Good day, I'm Samantha Allen and this is your GIS News for Friday, April 11. The National Water Commission is assuring the public that it's doing all it can to operate optimally in this continued dry season. But customers in the corporate area should continue to expect periods of low water pressure or no piped water. The commission says it's challenged by continued steep declines in inflows from the major rivers that serve the large water supply facilities, as well as other problems that have developed on the network. As a result, it has implemented a new water supply supply regime for much of the corporate area that's served by the Hermitage, Constant Spring, Hope and Mona water supply systems. Packed water will now be supplied between 4 and 8 each morning and between 4 and 8 each evening to the mainly residential areas of Augustown, Ellison Flats, Bedward Gardens, Tavern, Hope Pastures, Beverly Hills, Mountain View, East Kingston, Norbrook and Manor Park down to Grandspen and Dunrobin. Mainly commercial districts such as New Kingston, Halfway Tree, Crossroads and Downtown Kingston will be supplied primarily primarily between 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. Sections of Portmore served by the Rio Cobre Tuller Springs water supply system will be supplied between 5 p.m. and 8 a.m. The NWC says a deficit of supply versus demand could force intensified restrictions over the next days and weeks. Customers are urged to expect some irregularities in the supply and to do all they can to store water when available and to conserve usage. $123 million has been allocated in the 2014-2015 budget to strengthen the country's capacity in the export markets and decrease trade deficits. The funds will go towards the Economic Partnership Agreement 2 Capacity Building Project to accelerate exports, enhance competitiveness, and further integrate the economy into global markets. Implemented by the Planning Institute of Jamaica with monetary support from the European Commission, the project should see a wider scope of improvement to laboratory services that meet international national requirements and standards on food safety. The program, which runs until December 2017, will also provide increased market opportunities for the micro, small and medium enterprises, the MSME sector. The third phase of the Citizen Security and Justice Program, CSJP, will get $939 million to carry out its operations this fiscal year. The money will be used to provide vocational skills training to 500 participants and internship opportunities to 300 persons. CSJP will also hire a consultant to develop a manual to train parents, conduct seven parenting education workshops, and four business development training workshops. 18 sets of psychological testing instruments will also be bought. The project is funded by the Government of Jamaica, the Inter-American Development Bank, Britain's Department for International Development, and Canada's Department of Foreign Affairs, Trade and Development. CSJP3, which is being implemented by the Ministry of National Security, will run from June 2014 to May 2019. The program targets unattached youth in violence-prone communities to develop their employability and life skills. 
The athletes' insurance plan will be launched in short order to help secure the welfare of Jamaican athletes. The announcement was made by Minister with Responsibility for Sport, Natalie Nita Headley, in an interview with JIS News. The athletes' insurance plan will allow for 1,500 of our um, athletes who are in a national development program to be insured and to also provide them with the kind of um, screening that would be required to ensure that we don't have some of the accidents that normally take place. Meanwhile, government is embarking on a number of measures to improve sporting facilities across the island. In this fiscal year, 23 high schools will have their sporting infrastructure upgraded under a $250 million improvement plan. The High School Sport Infrastructure Improvement Project, which was launched in November last year, is being funded through the European Union's Sugar Transformation Project and the Sports Development Foundation. And finally, Prime Minister Portia Simpson-Miller has expressed profound sadness at the passing of the former Prime Minister and President of Trinidad and Tobago, Arthur A. N. R. Robinson. In a release, the Prime Minister said Trinidad and Tobago had lost a statesman and a true son of our regional community. Mrs. Simpson-Miller added that Mr. Robinson was one of the Caribbean's most accomplished leaders who strongly advocated for the sovereign rights of Caribbean people. She said Jamaica's thoughts and prayers were with Mr. Robinson's family and the government and people of Trinidad and Tobago. A.N.R. Robinson served as Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago from 1986 to 1991 and later as President in 1997. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Samantha Allen. Thanks for watching. That can easily change if we allow the cutting of trees forest fires, animal grazing, crop cultivation, or improper dwellings to destroy our forest reserves. Help preserve Jamaica's flora and fauna. If you know or suspect that someone is hurting our forest reserves, call 1-888-FORESTS. Remember, protecting our forests means sustaining our lives. Family, school, church, community, all important agents of change in our society. They influence what we think about ourselves, our surroundings, and how we see the roles of males and females. Let's all work together for equality for all Jamaicans. Let's make Jamaica a place where both males and females have equal access to a good education, good jobs, the best health care, and opportunities for the good of the country. Males and females are different, but it doesn't mean they're not equal. Let's build a Jamaica that doesn't discriminate. Become, become an, an agent, agent of, of change. Since Monday of this week, we've been reminding you about some of the things government has done under its five strategic priorities for the 2013-2014 financial year. The same accomplishments that kept you glued to your television sets and computer screens while watching Jamaica Magazine. Today, we'll conclude our review series with achievements under strategic priority number five. A unique combination of projects will be developed to provide social and economic protection and security for you and your families. Fast forward one year and scores of vulnerable individuals can boast of receiving assistance thanks to government's policy of effective social inclusion. Effective social inclusion was goal 5 on the agenda for the 2013-2014 financial year. And under that, government sought to do four things. Improve social protection programs, provide access to affordable housing solutions for low-income earners, establish fully developed local governance structures, and mainstream gender international development. $4 billion was allocated in the last financial year to help improve offerings to the most vulnerable. The over 40,000 persons served by the Program of Advancement through Health and Education PATH got a 15% increase in their benefits starting in August 2013. A transportation allowance was added to the benefits for school children in September and $100 million was allocated to provide bursaries for 1,000 tertiary students. This investment ensures that some of the nation's brightest and most innovative minds are not left behind because of poverty. 
Government also took major strides on two initiatives to help the disabled community. With funding from the Japan Social Investment Fund, a contract was signed in March 2014 with seven entities to provide consultancy services for skills training and job readiness coaching for special needs individuals. It's one component under the broader Social and Economic Inclusion of Persons with Disabilities project. And in March, the disability bill was taken to Cabinet. Our success at survival nationally and regionally will depend in the larger scheme of things on the success of persons with disabilities in whom reside some of the critical skills needed to help in grasping the opportunities before us. That wasn't the only legislative victory in the quest for the protection of vulnerable individuals. While the National Child Diversion Policy is being finalized, the Child Care and Protection Act was amended to enable the provision of legal aid for children in conflict with the law, and a manual to guide the treatment of children in court was launched. Cabinet also approved amendments to the Trafficking in Persons, Prevention, Suppression and Punishment Act, increasing the penalties and making provisions for offenses connected to trafficking, such as assault, carnal abuse, rape, child pornography, forced labor or forced begging. the youngest recipient of one of these homes, it is quite a difficult task to fully articulate the significance of this achievement. This is an opportunity for me and my family to improve our life. Shanika is just one of many who got the opportunity to own a home as government intensified its island-wide program to increase housing solutions. She is one of 40 who were handed keys to strata units in Majesty Gardens in December 2013. 85 persons in Gravel Heights, St. Catherine, 17 Ebony Park, Clarendon, 14 Donaldson, St. Thomas, and 70 persons from Seaview Gardens were among a host of other persons who received the titles to their homes during the financial year. That's in addition to beneficiaries under the Sugar Workers Housing Program. The time has now come for a fundamental and sustainable transformation of the way sugar workers live. The Barracks Relocation Project was therefore conceived to build decent houses and decent communities for the current and future generations of occupants. So far, construction is complete on homes in Hamden, Trelawney, while work continues on other sites in the parish as well as in Westmoreland, Clarendon and St. Thomas. Work also continued to help provide ordinary Jamaicans with an outlet to influence development in their communities and, by extension, the country. Cabinet approved the Strategic Laws and Reform of Local Government Act in November. The proposed Local Governance Act will be created by consolidating several existing acts and will introduce several new concepts and tenets which reflect a modern approach to local governance and which will strengthen local self-management. In February, the local government ministry completed a series of parish consultations island-wide to educate persons about local government generally and how they can help to play their roles in community development. And long before that, the ministry set out to provide practical examples to residents through the launch of the second phase of a plastic separation and recycling project in Manchester in April 2013 and the launch of the community renewal program in August. Government continues to refine its strategy for gender equality, leaning on statistics that shows marginalization of females. Guided by its draft national policy on gender equality, a $7.5 million public education campaign on violence against women was developed just as the financial year started. In June 2013, Generation was launched to bring attention to the issue. Understanding the issue of youth violence from a gender perspective and promoting serious dialogue on this development challenge among critical stakeholders and grassroots community organizations, including the youth themselves, is an absolute necessity. And as the Bureau of Gender Affairs celebrated 40 years, legislation was developed to help ensure teen mothers can return to school after conception. Effective social inclusion is back on the agenda for this financial year. 
No doubt, government will continue to roll out programs and develop legislation which will help its most vulnerable citizens have equal access to resources that can enhance their lives. You said, sure, let me get the invitation from America. A passport is one of the most important forms of... Here at Pico, we believe in excellent customer service. So when we wanted our customers to know about us, we approached the GIS and they delivered and we got excellent value for money. And so we encourage you to go to the GIS, a one-stop shop for media services. They have print, radio, television and so much more. We're 11 days into the new financial year, and as usual, government will continue to implement programs under its strategic priorities that will touch on every sector of society. For this financial year, there are six strategic priorities. Firstly, the aim is to continue to promote fiscal responsibility while pursuing a credible macroeconomic program. It's not that complicated. Things like containing public expenditure, getting rid of waste and corruption, and continuing with tax and pensions reforms. There's also a plan to create jobs and grow the economy through a number of measures in the tourism, manufacturing, and agricultural sectors. And through the Ministry of National Security and Justice, government will be building on the progress made in crime fighting, as well as the justice system, so that persons can feel safe from pursuing legitimate businesses and have full confidence in the courts. On top of that, the plan is to further develop human capital through education, healthcare, and more public-private partnerships. Vulnerable persons like the disabled and the elderly will not be left out, as social programs like those outlined in the previous feature will be continued. But all these plans will not be accomplished unless a natural environment is protected. So special emphasis is being placed on environmental and climate change resilience. Through those six strategic priorities, government is playing its role to help Jamaica become the place of choice to live, work, raise families, and do business. The Jamaica Logistics Hub. The Jamaica Logistics Hub. The Jamaica Logistics Hub. A topical subject on the minds of many Jamaicans. What exactly is the Jamaica Logistics Hub initiative? Logistics is the process by which businesses manage the flow of goods, services, people, information, energy, and other resources through the entire supply chain from source to end users. The various components of the hub will allow Jamaica to capitalize on the increased trade expected to flow through the region when the Panama Canal expansion is completed in 2016. We are not saying by that that all of the project would have been finished. We are saying that there is a core set of projects and programs that must be implemented. The Jamaica Logistics Hub, a plan in action to increase trade and grow the economy. This is a wonderful program to be, be in because it helps you to get some form of income. It helps you to experience a lot of things, more experience in your work, development, punctuality, patience as well, using your initiatives, um, creativity, persistence, um, the drive to go on. The best program my sister for her right now in Jamaica. It has done a lot of things to the young youths like me right now. CSJP has been a, a main breadwinner for me. That's where I get my bread and stuff like that. That's where I get experience, I get to know other people and stuff like that. 
the Citizen Security and Justice Program, CSJP, an initiative of the Ministry of National Security, promoting positive values and attitudes while empowering unattached youth in volatile communities. So you've seen what government has been doing to assist the most vulnerable, as well as other initiatives to improve the lives of Jamaicans. But these wonderful programs will not fulfill their objectives if the physical environment is not safe. Let's see what one community has been doing to ensure that crime and violence is reduced. Andrea Chisholm tells that story. It was the inspiring story of the late Nelson Mandela, the first black president of South Africa, that brought this film to life. Invictus. Who wants to play rugby? Your country is very proud. Mandela, being portrayed by Morgan Freeman, used sport, rugby, to unite post-apartheid South Africa. Here in Jamaica, organizations and individuals working in the community of Central Village in St. Catherine are employing a similar strategy. Through sport, the community is uniting for change. Citizens are coming together to bring back the love and maintain the peace in their community. The Ministry of National Security has taken note of Mandela's words. Sport has the power to change the world, to inspire and unite people. So in conjunction with a number of non-governmental organizations, the police, churches and community members, the National Security Ministry is using its Unite for Change campaign to organize corner league football competitions as part of a series of interventions in violence prone communities. Central Village is one such community moving full speed ahead with the initiative, organizing Football Sundays, a combination of football, netball and counseling sessions for children to promote peace in the community. I came here at first and saw this field and I know this field. This field was a battlefield instead of a play field. But things have changed for community members. The field is now what they term a business field for teams participating in the seven-a-side knockout competition. Each team enters with $1,400 and the winner receives $15,000 bragging rights and the Unite for Change trophy from the Ministry of National Security. Here's Tupi now. Oh, still cool, man. Here's Alden in that shot. The football teams in Central Village are apparently huge fans of popular clubs in Spain's La Liga football competition and the English Premier League in England. They proudly supported the jersey templates of teams like Real Madrid, Barcelona, Manchester City and Arsenal. But of course, they have their own unique names. Image, Riverbank, Macatree, Slashdash, Anytime and River Plate, just to name a few. They may not have much in terms of infrastructure and some may be physically challenged, but they are not deterred. All are determined to do great things with little. Just ask this 14-year-old captain. Please play good. Which position you play? Forward. I would like to compete. Mm -hmm. I love winning. Here is Grand Out. Oh, Grand The females in Central Village have also risen to the occasion, forming special bonds through a game of netball. The sporting competitions have breathed new life into the St. Catherine community, bringing out scores of individuals on Sundays to socialize and restore peace. Even the animals seem contented. Everybody's at peace. Big Lane and Little Lane that used to war. They are no war anymore. And I congratulate the police as well and the people who take part. It's wonderful. We can come out, we can have fun. We can just do about what the Lord has set us to do on earth. Enjoy ourselves and be glad and happy. Boys and girls who normally used to be involved in, you know, hating each other, cursing, you know, fighting and all these things have been united since this. So it's something that is very good for the community. The children are not left out of the peace building equation. The group Children First has been conducting interactive sessions with the youngsters, offering counseling and promoting conflict resolution. We use um, activities to, to let them express themselves. And when we get the messages out, we come up with possible solutions of how oh, they, um, them as children can be um, agents of change within their community. 
They say a picture is worth a thousand words. I want peace in my community. Peace, love and unity. National Security Minister Peter Bunting has been in Central Village to witness the activities and seems quite impressed with the peace building initiatives. I believe we can do it and we must do it. Otherwise, we're not going to get the type of development that we need to create jobs and get prosperous communities going. The goal now is to sustain the program, and that's where the Citizen Security and Justice Program, CSJP, will come into play. Out of all these programs, we see where persons can traverse anywhere they want to go in the community, and we see a level of unity. The Violence Prevention Alliance will also be monitoring the activities. Is the crime really going on in the community? Is there a commitment towards building that house? Corporate Jamaica is invited to come on board and help the residents in Central Village develop a structured sports program and other amenities needed for social upliftment. Even though we had a whole lot of war in our past, we can live together and come back together and bring any community back together because if Central Village can be together, we all can be together. Central Village in St. Catherine, uniting for change, using sports and counseling sessions to bring members together and promote peace in the community. To paraphrase a quote from Mother Teresa, they know they may not be able to change the world, but they are casting a stone across the waters and creating a ripple effect. What are you doing to help the fight against crime? Sitting on the corner, minding your own business, definitely not going to work. It is time for us to unite. Unite. Unite for change. Citizens coming together to make their respective communities safer. The police, schools, public health, business, churches, NGOs, parents and neighborhood watch volunteers. As we, the police, do our job. We, as citizens, need to do our part as well. Report crimes or even suspicious activities. Let's all work together. As one united front against crime. And make Jamaica the place of choice to live, work, raise families, and do business. Unite for Change, an initiative of the Ministry of National Security. Exhausted the time available for this Friday's edition of Jamaica Magazine. But if you're tech savvy, visit our website, jis.gov.jm, for more useful information. And follow us on Twitter at JIS News. Also, feel free to share your thoughts. Email us at Jamaica Magazine at jis.gov.jm. I'm Audrey Williams. Thanks for watching Jamaica Magazine. See you again tomorrow. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.